get a children's church. Amen. See you all again. says in verse 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense and when Zechariah saw him he was troubled and fear fell upon him Zacharias had an angelic visitation it was not a dream it was not a vision, but it was a visitation from an angel. The angel was visible and the angel was audible. In verse 11 it says, And there appeared unto the angel and the Lord of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Verse 12, And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. In verse 19, and the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. So it wasn't a vision, it wasn't a dream, it was an angelic visitation whom Zechariah saw and whom he heard. 
Now, for some of us, that's just too much for us to handle. But I want you to know that God is still sending angels yes. to give messages unto his people. Uh, the, the Bible lets us know that God has sent this angel, I believe, giving affirmation to his prayer. Oftentimes, because we have prayed and nothing, nothing has happened, there has not been an answer to our prayer, we become discouraged and frustrated. But I want you to know that delay does not mean denial. Just because God says wait does not mean he won't. All right? And so I believe that the Lord sent his angel to give affirmation to the prayers that he had been praying. The Bible says that um, the angel came and spoke unto him. In verse 13, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now the issue is, the Bible says that Zacharias, that he was old, and that his wife, Elizabeth, was well, well stricken in age. And I would sense that, and I believe that it would be appropriate for us to say in the scripture that Zacharias had been praying for a long time for Elizabeth to have a baby. And I believe that maybe at this season of his life that he had grown weary and that he had been dismayed and that uh, 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 God came to affirm that he heard his prayer. And I believe that as Zacharias is coming down to the uh, sunset of his life, where things are about to come to an end, his life is about to expire, that somehow he's still praying that God would vindicate him and that God would vindicate his wife, Elizabeth. Because the Bible says that she was barren. And barrenness was a sign of a curse in that the blessings of God was not upon the life of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And so I believe that part of Zacharias' prayer was, God, please bless me to vindicate me because the Bible says that he was a righteous man. They were both righteous before God, walking in all of his own commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And so therefore, they, she wasn't stricken with barrenness because of sin or an issue in the not. But the Bible lets us know that they were righteous and they walked in all the commandments of God and they were blameless. And so, I want you to know that what appears to be bad things can happen to good people. Yes. The righteous is not exempt from trials or tribulations or trouble or situations. But I want you to know that it wasn't because she was cursed. It wasn't because God hadn't blessed them. You know, it was because God wanted to do something in them that he did not want to do in anybody else. In other words, God wanted to do something extraordinary in their life and not just do the ordinary thing, the same old thing, the deja vu. And so I believe that Zacharias was a righteous man, that he not only was righteous in his duty as he performed his duty in the temple as a priest, but he was also righteous in his living. And so he was blameless and he walked upright before God. And he and, 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 and God recognized that. And I believe that maybe the struggle that Zacharias had was simply this. Lord, I'm righteous. I walk before you. I serve you. But yet, I, but yet there's this stigma still attached to me. One of the things that I believe the Lord was speaking to me in the sense was in the sense that oftentimes we find ourselves in situations like that. And, and I believe that Zacharias was praying out of desperation. I believe that he got to a point in his life that he was desperate. Look, man, I'm old. My wife is well stricken. We've been scorned. This stigma has been upon us. You know, uh, even even Elizabeth said er, later on that you know they they that called her barren, and so when they referred to her as barren, it wasn't a good thing. It was a, it was a bad thing. They were ridiculing her and scorning her, and so they were mocking her, and they had to go through years 
the mockery and ridicule, ridicule and score because now you're well stricken in age and here they're the priests. He's the priest. And yet, God's not blessing him as they sin because if they were blessed, then she would have a baby. She would have And so I believe in, in, in his old age, he becomes desperate. Lord, you've got to do something quick. I don't have much time left. I believe that, yeah, I believe that, you know, I live the life that honors you. And I don't understand why I don't have a child, but the ridicule, the storm that we have to go through is bearing down on me. And so out of the desperation, even in his old age, when he realizes there's nothing he could do to procreate, but yet because he's desperate, he still prays. And the Lord said, Because, because, because he 
We want God to take extraordinary things. Yet we're not willing that God to do extraordinary things to us. The moment we allow God to do it the way he wants to do it, is when we begin to experience the supernatural power of our God. And so in verse 15 to 7 through 17, it simply says, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the heart of the father to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I want you to know that your condition is no reason. It, your, your condition, I'm sorry, your condition is for a reason and never an excuse. Oftentimes we use our conditions for our excuses for not doing what God wants to do. God, I'm too old now. I'm well stricken in age. God, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to college. God, I don't have what other folk have. And God, I've been sick. And God, I have this. And God, I have that. And God, I have a plethora of things. I want you to know that your condition is for a reason. Amen. Not for an excuse. Not for you to cop out. Not for you not to believe God. If we believe that all things work together for our good, if we believe that God has a plan for our lives, if we believe that he's sovereign and that he's working all things after the counsel of his will, if we believe that God has purpose and plan for our lives, it doesn't matter what your condition is. Some of us will experience our best years at the end of our lives.
but he was still pumping iron and still working out. Come on. Had a six pack. Hello, somebody. You know, uh, but he wasn't double lapping. His belly was double lapping over his stomach, over his back. You see, but, you see, but if he was a young man, he had no problem with Gabriel talking to him this way. But because now he's well stricken in age and he come home, he can't see the way out. You don't have to see the way out. The Bible says the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says all things are possible to get that belief. I like God doing the impossible things. I like to trust God with the impossible things. I like to see God move where I can't move. I like to see God do what I don't have power to do. I like God see like God. I like to see God do what I don't have the intellect or the mind to do. I like to see God do where I have no power or strength to do. It's not about me. It's him that walking in you on the wheel and the doing with pleasure. Somebody needs to recognize tonight, today, that you have a treasure in earthen vessel. I don't care if it's breaking down. It's not the building. It's not the body. It's the treasure inside. Yeah, about 40 years old. I'm going to let you know, look, I might be old by 
not excuse. It's not, it's, it's for a reason, not an excuse. The thing that the Lord said to me, you know, and we're in prayer this morning, and it was prophesied. And I just, I heard the witness of the Spirit that the environment was right. And the environment was impregnated for something to happen. Because, first of all, prayer was made. Amen. The Bible says that they were outside praying yeah. while Zachariah was in the temple doing his priestly duties. It was worship. And Zacharias was in the temple worshiping, doing his priestly duties. There was obedience. The Bible says that Zacharias and Elizabeth walked in all the commandments of God. And so I said, Lord, the, there, was, there was an environment that would have been right for something to happen and explode. But then the Lord said one thing was lacking. Even though they had all the form, yeah. even, that, even though they had all the right stuff and doing the right stuff, the thing they didn't have was faith. They didn't integrate faith in the worship. They didn't integrate faith in the prayer. They didn't integrate faith in the obedience. Come on, somebody. And so therefore, since they were lacking faith, God couldn't do anything. And the word that came by this morning said the Lord's going to prick the hearts of God's people. Come on. Because many of us have been in the church. We've been in the worship. We've been in the prayer. We've, we've done all the right things. We've had all the forms, but yet nothing happened. And the Holy Spirit said nothing will happen until you integrate Faith with it. It's your faith is put in it. Come on. God is not so much concerned about worship. He's not concerned about form. But what he wants is substance. And faith and now faith is the substance. Come on. Of 
same thing. You can use it. So the angel appears to Mary. And he says, you're highly favored. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found faith with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom shall be no end. And then Mary said to the angel, how shall this be? See, I know not a man. Just tell me like you told me the man of everything. Tell me the problem. You think you're the man of everything. Some of you women are the loose that man you got right now. I don't know how God is saying that. You don't really need him. He's more of a he's more of a problem. Come on. He's more of a liability than I said. You don't need a man for everything. Come on. I'm not talking about artificial insemination. I'm not talking about some crazy stuff that we're doing today. But the Bible says, Mary said, how, how, how can it be? I have not been intimate. I have not had separation with a man. But God was about to do something. He already showed what he could do with those who are old and sick and didn't have it right in the womb. But now he said, I'll move upon you who never knew a man. Come on, somebody. You got to wait and allow God to do the great thing he wants to do in your life. Just hold out, hold on. And just continue to believe God that he has something for you. He called to Zechariah and said, because you did not believe. My words. That will be fulfilled in their season. Say the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall conceive a son. And to call his name Jesus, the Savior. I want you to know that the miracle of that, Elizabeth Zachariah was a precursor to God and Son be great. You see how look how look how look how good God is. And going to help us in our faith walk. And go to see what God has done. Well, maybe it's not that thing after all. God did that. Then maybe we do this. And so God even helps us in our walk of faith. And so he did a miracle for Zechariah and Elizabeth, but he was preparing the people for a greater miracle. I believe today that God is preparing us for a greater miracle. And many of us are still doing what God, what, what God has done. That's why the Bible says, look, we're not performing this. Behold, I'm doing a new miracle. And so he summed up this way. He says, with God, nothing. Is it yeah. I say with God, yeah. nothing yeah. is impossible because thou do not believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in this season. You shall not be done. You see, God can't allow faithless people to keep speaking. When God is about to do something, had to shut the mouths of the faithless because he can't move in that arm. And so now, Zacharias, your mouth shall be closed until what I say come to pass. Some of you just can't move spiritually. You can't speak anything to exist because God has shut your mouth. God will allow you to speak because what God wants to do is greater. Come on, his purpose is great in the earth. That's what he wants to do for you. He's not going to allow you to bring about a spirit of unbelief and doubt in the midst when he wants to do something great. John had to be quiet. He says, because he believed the words that were spoken, which will be fulfilled in this season. When the word was fulfilled, he opened John's mouth because all he knew God to say to him was, how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? 